Hello and welcome to the 91st episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team, Heather Powell, coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And with me as always is... Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. Fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous <clears throat> ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky. And yeah, wow, it's a, a new year of new <laughs> horror films. <laughs> it's Ooh, a new year. Boy. It's a new year of shitty, shitty January horror films. We're like, new year. And this is, we're recording this for everyone to know on February 4th. Uh, because there was literally, like, Scott, I was like, you watch anything? I watch two. I watch one. Okay, let's just wait to see what happens. This year was slower than last yeah. i felt like it was like pew, pew, yeah I like pew. i believe there's a bunch of stuff on uh video on demand but i'm not willing to rent a lot of these movies that come out at the beginning of the year I'm, I'm i'll wait till they can just start streaming somewhere right and like i have learned i have rented some movies for 8.99 and they've been not that great yeah. and i think if something and i understand they want to make money i get it you know it's not cheap to make films i understand all that but shit some of, some of these movies when they're like such a high rental price i'm like and how about no <laughs> right exactly it's like yeah <laughs> i'll wait till i find you on tubi Tubi or Shutter or Netflix or Paramount or which Paramount up here? I we don't. You guys have Paramount down there. Yep. Crave for us, which is HBO um, and some other services. But like, yeah, man, it just gets to the point where you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is what is this? What is this? But it's been um, so it's been slow. We do finally have some to talk about, um, which is good. Now, yeah. spoiler, some of these were released at film festivals in 2023. Hashtag Rob Humphreys will not count these. But Rob, you can suck our collective cock because we're going to <laughs> count these as 2024s because if they were at a film festival and they did not have a wide release, but they've had a wide release starting in, you know, sorry, if they were in a film festival in 2023, but they've only had a wide release in 2024, that's what we count. Exactly. Um, and that's how we've always fucking done it. Just that's so right. we're clear. This isn't just something we started now because we're desperate for movies. Um, this is definitely something that... <laughs> it's always, it's always been our rule. It's always been there. It's always been... The, it's always been Rob. Um, it's always been you, my love. It's always... <laughs> Erica's love like, you, Me? you're like, no, no, Rob. <laughs> you know, I, I love my Rob. My... my. My oh, brother Rob. from another mother. Oh, Rob. So, yeah, we'll get... Shutter has been fucking dry. Like, it has been... They've been adding stuff. But they yeah. haven't been adding anything new. Well, yeah, there was the... a new one that I thought was supposed to drop Friday, but it looked like it dropped on, like, Saturday or something. But it's a... I think Panda, Panda something or other, but it's a uh, documentary on uh, Dario Argento and his film history. Oh, man. I don't know if I want to sit through that. Inferno is what I see here. Is it that? Is no, that it's what it's called? Pandico oh, no. or something like that. Might oh, be. I see it. Pandico. Yeah. I heard it was good, so I'll probably check it out because I do like some Dario Argento stuff. I will maybe watch it. I can see there's some interesting stuff. Shutter's added this one called Knives and Skin. Um, Kindred, which we saw a long time ago. Same with Werewolves Within, Spiral, which is a Japanese from 1998. Um, yeah. Chopping Mall. Can we please just stop watching Chopping Mall? No, <laughs> Chopping Mall is fine. Adding adding it to streaming services you can watch that shit on tv like chopping mall is not a hard movie to find shutter oh okay i see what you mean yeah How you know what i mean it's like you i know, know chopping mean? mall it's dumb 
<laughs> yeah, I, I get it, but like, can we add stuff to Shutter that's hard to get other places? You know what I mean? Like, do we have to right. add like the low fruit fucking hanging '80s films to Shutter? Like, give me something new, give me something fresh. I want it all, Scott. <laughs> I want it all. <laughs> I know it's funny because I was listening to uh, our friends, Dummies of Horror, uh, and yeah, like their list of movies is pretty similar to what we watched because oh, Tim yeah. was saying the same thing, like. Really wasn't much out there. I think he's he watched one. That's, I got. I, I'll have to go back and listen to what it was called, but it was one that was on Amazon Prime that uh, we did not watch. But okay. he's he said it was the better one that he's seen so far this year, and he's like, it's not saying much, but it's better than well, it's what I've watched. Much because it's Tim's opinion, and we all know <laughs> this guy couldn't even understand Infinity Pool. You know, like he. <laughs> wow, Tim, you hearing that? Yes, I'm kidding. He knows I'm kidding. He actually has very honest and clear opinions about films, and I've always appreciated his uh, his thoughts on them. I thought about, you know, when we get to our in our hundreds, we should have them back on again. Um, oh, absolutely. Him and Daniel. Now that Daniel's a finally a, a cared for man with his wedding. Um, yep. Congratulations, Luffy, on getting uh, married. Uh, congratulations on finding someone to suck your dick for the rest of your life. Congratulations. <laughs> it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, you know, I was thinking I was I was just out with my friend and her partner this afternoon. I'm sure Scott knows who I'm referring to mm-hmm. became official with her partner. And like typical fashion, I com- I showed how I was a much better mate like I did with Erica and offered ah. free university. So I got a lot of women who are expecting me to learn how to eat pussy at this point because I've <laughs> offered my services and my marriage to like. Erica, Jenna, I think Amber wants a piece of the action too. <laughs> and it's really not great because I like cock a lot. So I don't know what I'm going to do, Scott. I don't tell Erica, okay? I don't want her to know that I'm playing the field and looking for her. She could be my American oh. girlfriend. Oh, I'm letting her know. Oh, fuck. But she must be my American girlfriend. No, you're trying to take her away from me. I'm letting her know. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us are shooting outside of our shot. Look at this fucking pussy coming in here. I'm not talking about Erica, too. I've never talked about Erica like that. I'm talking about one of Scott's cats. Um, which cat is that one? Is that this Gray? Is Biff. Biff. Oh, I couldn't even tell. Oh, look at him. He's all up in your grill, huh? Yep, eat my shoulder, Kitty. He's trying to get in my shoulder. There I don't go. think I told you. My foster dog, Casper, got adopted. Really? Yesterday. Yes. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, so Casper was adopted. I had a foster dog, an American Eskimo, fluffy little bum bum. For three months to the day, and he was adopted by a lovely older couple yesterday. Oh, uh, yay. And now Mick Mac's probably like, fuck uh, yes, back to my own, back to the mama to myself. You know what? He was kind of sad when he left. He went sniffing really? for him, and they, like, kind of did a goodbye bark to each other. It was kind of sad. Um, but, yeah, he's fine today. Now he's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> House to myself. <laughs> Finally, the fucking dick's gone. Uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of good because I will be heading up to my trip, too. And I'm not... Here we go. To the UK and Paris. Because <laughs> oh, this bad. time as well, I'm going to France, Scott. Can you imagine how nauseating I'm going to be? Oh, God. Is, nice. high, is High Tension a French film? It is. Mm-hmm. Right? I should walk around Paris and ask people if they've seen High Tension. <laughs> no, you need, to be going, you need to be walking around France and be like, Oh, 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 oh what we want to oh, see. Oh, <laughs> back at, back at. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck is with this bitch? They're like, are you that girl from Friday Nightmares? <laughs> about going to the UK all the time? Be like, sake bleu, I am. Sake <laughs> bleu, I am. And hopefully after I get back, Scotty and Erica will come up in the spring and we'll uh, we'll have more reindeer games together. We'll yeah, see. we'll definitely be trying. You know, get these car situations taken care of first. Like, or not, you're going to have to fucking get some horses. <laughs> I find the horses up here over the border. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, because, yeah, all three of our vehicles are dealing with one issue or another. (laughs) Honestly, you know what? It's Flintstone car time. You're going to have to yabba-dabba-doo all the way down. Yeah, no freaking kidding. (laughs) Well, Uh, I guess guess we dragged it out long enough. We can talk about these winter 2024 2024 horror films. I got to get used to saying 2024. Fuck. Good. You are always better at it than I am because of your job, and I'm always Yeah, I was like, going to say, yeah, my job makes me see the date constantly. Like, being in your OnlyFans, you have exactly. to definitely make sure your videos are up to date. <laughs> right? I got to I gotta make sure my fans are happy. Oh, uh, man, fuck. I hear that. You know what I'm not <laughs> happy with? This movie. Just kidding. It wasn't that bad. 
I'll start with it, though. Destroy All Neighbors. This was the uh, one and only Shutter original that was released in January. Um, this was an 86-minute runtime. William Brown, a neurotic, self-absorbed musician determined to finish his prog rock mix. <laughs> album faces a creative roadblock in the form of a noisy and grotesque neighbor named valid finally working up the nerve to demand that valid to keep it down willie and william uh, willie <laughs> we're on a short-term name versus uh, <laughs> situation now so william invertedly decapitates him but while attempting to cover up one murder william oh no what did i do here william accidentally raised Reign of terror causes victims to pile up and becomes undead corpses who torment and create a more bloody detour on his road to prog rock success. Um, yeah. What did you think? It was fine. It was, I was hoping for a lot more, like, cause, uh, you know, being That's the like middle. That's what most men say to me after. <laughs> like, yeah, there. Here we go. <laughs> No, that's not true. No one's ever said that. They're like, you're too hot to handle. Anyway, back to this movie. Sorry. <laughs> but, but yeah, like the special effects were good. There were some good gore scenes. Uh, had some funny moments to it. I like the whole prog rock thing because I I'm into you know heavy metal, so yeah, I yeah. appreciate that. But it was just missing something. I don't know what it was, but there was just something there that just didn't hook me in to make because this could have been like you know this had me thinking oh this could be like the you know up there with deathgasm and that type of like mute like music blend with horror type stuff. But yeah, it just was it was lacking something. I don't know exactly what, but yeah, like it was just it was okay. Yeah, I think that that's a really good. It was okay, you know. Last year, we had Sorry About the Demon that was dropped. I feel like this was a very similar flavor. It was average, yeah. mediocre. You know, when you're at a bar and there's only one good-looking person, that's what this <laughs> was. I was actually going out for a birthday dinner in a place called Brantford on a Friday night. And a friend of mine asked me if I was going to a sex party. I said, well, that's the only place where I would be considered the hottest one in the room. <laughs> oh. It's Brantford. So <laughs> anyone who's from Ontario, you know what I'm talking about. That reminds me of this movie. <laughs> so it was average. It, it was fun enough. I kind of liked the, the character when he got his head chopped off and how he kind of came everywhere with him. and was kind of like this evil little demon. I mm -hmm. thought that was funny. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Um, so the so the ratings go as follow. Matt Wood, Matt Wood, mm, sexy gave, Matt Wood, mm, boy. gave two and a half stars. His co-star Kate, because she didn't want to hurt his feelings, also gave it two and a half stars. <laughs> Tim gave it one and a half, which is fair. Uh, you gave it three. Dave Bailey gave it two, and I'm probably sitting at I don't know. Let's say two, two and a half. I think that two and a half is fair. There was effort put into it. It wasn't the worst film I've ever seen, but uh. I won't be running out anytime soon to watch it again. Yeah. Uh, but if anyone wants, if you're, uh, you know, you watch all the shutters like Scott and I do because we're very serious podcasters, uh, you can go ahead and watch it. But I wouldn't uh, do it, get too excited about it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this next one you watched and I did not. because you. Oh, I didn't watch it. it. I tortured myself. This was part of a saw game that I had to play. This movie was fucking horrible. <laughs> uh, so this movie is called Scalper. <laughs> like the opening scene is this guy gets sexually assaulted with a ch with a machete and oh there's and there's what's supposed to be poo but it's like chocolate on this machete after the guy's done because he sticks it up his ass a whole bunch of times <laughs> once that happened i was like that looks like chocolate mousse this is going to be an interesting fucking movie so this is an 83 minute runtime. Everyone around psychic Clement Carter, Clementine Carter is being brutally murdered by mass killer dubbed the scalper. Is it a deadly, is it the deadly psycho Andrew Lupis back from the grave or a copycat killer or a horror beyond, beyond imagination? Clementine must use her second sight. <laughs> your, your favorite kind of movie, Scott. Psychics and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? To stay one step ahead of the maniac's blade to solve the murder. Tim Davis walked the, watched this movie. He gave it a two-star. I love his review. I didn't realize going into this that this is a sequel to a film I've never heard of, so that didn't help this watch. But, man, this was a slog for me to get through. 
Luckily, this had some decent gore and a cool looking killer, but that's pretty much as much praise as I can give it. Same, same. Yes, like I had no idea this was a sequel until I heard him talking about it on his show today. I was like, oh boy. Yeah, I don't know why this is a, like what the first one's called. Is the first one called Scalp? Like, I don't no, know. No, it's a name that's completely different. He had to look at it. Really? I don't even remember what it was called, but yeah, it was something else. Oh, that's fucking weird. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, so this was mediocre at best. Um, it actually was below mediocre. It was low budget, not done well. I'm sad I watched it. Um, I don't know. Unless you're someone that really enjoys low budget, Jason Gray, I'm looking at you. Um, he watches everything. Yeah. Like, Jason Gray would be like, ah, this movie was made for 99 cents. You know what? I'll give it a fucking shot. And I respect that about Jason because that's what you and I do, too. Exactly. So, where to watch it if you're interested? This is a video on demand. You're looking at Apple TV, you're looking at Google Play, you're looking at YouTube, you're looking at Microsoft Store, and you're looking at Amazon Video. Honestly, unless you are a big advocate of low-budget horror, I don't really think this is worth your time. Uh, but if you are, you can rent it in any of those places. I don't recommend spending a lot of money on it, but knowing movies like this is probably going for fucking like seven ninety nine as a rental. Yeah. Uh, and, after hearing your intended review, I'm like, I'm good. You're so but, good. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, speaking of sad and me- mediocre and not wanting to waste money on it, uh, the next movie we're going to talk about is Night Swim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good yeah. Lord. So good this part. has a 98-minute runtime. Uh, tagline, everything you fear is under the surface. Uh, the synopsis is, forced into early retirement by a degenerative illness, former baseball player Ray Waller moves into a new house with his wife and two children. He hopes that the backyard swimming pool will be fun for the kids and provide physical therapy for himself. However, a dark secret from the home's past soon unleashes a malevolent force that drags the family into the depths of inescapable terror. Um, Yeah, this was the first theatrical horror release of the year, and it's a Blumhouse movie, all right? It's very generic by numbers, but it's a haunted swimming pool. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> However, can we defeat the spirit? Oh, I don't know. Maybe don't go fucking swimming. <laughs> anyway, it's a pretty obvious answer, but do you think the people do that? No, of course not. No, they do not. Um, I had a good chuckle as reading some of the reviews because some of the reviews include the following. Did anyone think about just never going swimming, as you said? <laughs> Maybe right. peeing will kill it. Why didn't people <laughs> just add more chlorine? <laughs> <laughs> it was very like womp womp. Um, it's I'd be so embarrassed if this happened to me. <laughs> this stinks. I'm already tired of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> um, our friends have given it some very very raving reviews. Let's see here. We got Tim Davis coming in with a whopping one and a half stars. Uh, we have Mr. Matt Wood coming in with a two star. And I think, oh, Mr. The Hump coming in at two stars, Mr. Rob Humphreys, and Duncan McLeish coming in at two stars, and Brian Stritcher coming in with a star and a half. So as you can tell, (laughs) this movie is extremely popular within the horror community and the podcasting community in general. I don't know, man. We're going to get into this later, so I'm going to save some thoughts for later because this inspired our Out of the Dark segment today. But let's just say there's some movies that are shorts that don't need to be made into full-length films. Yeah. Um, and I think that this could have been a really creepy, scary movie if done differently. Um, if, if it was not a haunted pool, for one. I, you could do a haunted <laughs> pool, but I think it's – like if you go in the pool and then the ghost follows you, there's Japanese folklore that's right. similar to that. You know, like no, I was going to say, like that would be the only way it worked, really. Right? Like, because you go into the house, you're followed by the spirits, right? So I could get behind something like that. That's not what this was. (laughs) No. That's that's not. Or Lady in the Water. I'm, you know, that is something where there's something living in the water. I could have got behind that, too. Um, This just seems like it was a short film that people thought that they should make into a full-length movie. Oh yeah, um, like, and it, it 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 and it shows. And it shows, and I think the raving reviews that it's getting reflects that this is why it was dropped on January fourth. So, um, I would say it's a skip if you uh, you are interested in it. It is available 
on demand at this point. It's out of theaters in Canada. It's available on all the, you know, Apple TV, Google Play, Amazon Video, Cineplex, which is our local um, theater chain, and YouTube. But I don't know, man. Like, unless you're serious, again, podcasters, very professional like Scott and myself who watch all films. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> then uh, perhaps you can just skip this one. Did Erica watch this one with you? Uh, no, she ended up watching it one of the nights that she was uh, having a hard time falling asleep. So she watched it. Did it, it put her she, to sleep? She Well, no, but the next day she goes, don't bother watching it. And I'm going, I kind of have to because it's the first theatrical release. <laughs> so you're like, do you not realize who I am, Erica? You are with a famous podcaster. I you have see the no crap choice. I watch? <laughs> we have no choice but to talk about these gems so everyone else can we take it well actually everyone took it because like everyone and their mom watched this film so we've stopped nobody we stopped nobody but this next one i don't remember talking to you about it and i feel like there's a reason why so um yeah i think i may have talked to you about this one i can't remember but uh when i was when you created this document and i was like okay let me see if there's any movies that i watched that i weren't added i came across this one i'm like oh yeah i forgot i watched that and then i sat there and thought fuck what was it even about? I had to go back and watch the trailer to refresh myself on what it was even about. Cause it just like, even the reading the synopsis didn't uh, bring, bring anything to mind, but I'll go over it real quick. But uh, this one is called the burned over district. Uh, it's a 103 minute runtime. And yes, Rob Humphrey, this says 2022, but I looked and it is a film festival release had a very limited run in a theater, one theater last year, and then came to Tubi this year. Um, the synopsis is a grieving a grieving man discovers that seemingly that a seemingly quiet town is hiding a very terrifying secret. Now he must find a way to overcome his grief and fight back against the darkness that has consumed the town and its people. And at first, I looked at my score and I apparently really liked it. Like I oh. like I gave it like a six six and a half. But as I you know only been like less than a week and I had almost completely forgotten about it, I dropped my <laughs> score down. But uh, yeah, this is basically just like a cult movie. Had some really cool stuff to it. Like once I watched the trailer, it kind of reinvigorated my memory of what happened in it. Had some decent kills. Um, the acting was okay. It had some some characters obviously did better than others, but yeah, if, if this tells you anything, like that, not even a week later, and I'm already struggling to remember anything from it originally, <laughs> that's saying something. It's not one that'll stick with you. It's not a bad watch. It's on Tubi. So like, if you have Tubi and you're just wanting to add another movie to your list. Some people might dig it more than me. So far, the only friends that have watched it is just uh, Tim Walker, who ga- also gave it a two and a half star after I and I did the same thing after thinking about it. But yeah, available on Tubi. It's just it's there. I think your honesty is much appreciated. Of the womp womp, it's there. Watch it if you need to, but be aware of the fact that it's not fabulous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll say it's definitely not really terrible, but right? yeah. You know what? This is what we expect in January, right? This is what we expect. Um, yeah, I mean, the I, highest rated movie I have, like, altogether so far from these six films I've watched is a three star. <laughs> so. Right? And, like, that's that's what you get. That's what yeah. you get in January, and that's okay. You know, sometimes you're not hitting it all out of the park. So the next one we're going to talk about is also a, is also a Tubi watch. It is called Guess Who? Uh, this is a 93-minute runtime. And a family turn family vers- visit turns deadly when a psychotic killer hiding behind an unusual tradition shows up with one target in mind. I really enjoyed this film. I thought that this was quite refreshing. I love the concept of the Mummer's Night. Uh, so, you know, short synopsis, a couple goes back to the husband's or the boyfriend's hometown, which is in kind of a trailer park. They celebrate the Mummer's Night. And... I becomes a slasher and to be honest besides some silly scenes like the part where a necklace gets stolen just outside a bathroom and some other stuff that was a little silly overall I enjoyed this movie I thought the acting was good enough I thought that the plot moved along well enough and for a free watch on Tubi not bad and it didn't overstay its welcome at 93 minutes thoughts for you Scotty yeah I'm kind of right there with you like this was one of the ones that I gave three stars um yeah it wasn't bad um I do like that it was a trailer park setting because you don't really seem to get too many horror films set in the trailer park nowadays and I thought that was a interesting setting especially for this mummers festival going on and people walking into your house and 
asking you a riddle and you haven't yeah. answered it and all that stuff. The this would have been much higher on my list, like uh, rating wise, but the ending reveal of who was behind the mask or masks was quite just dumb. I thought like the mm. ending just kind of ruined it for me and made it like because this could have been a seven and a seven to an eight for me if it nailed the ending, but the ending kind of dropped it down. Yeah, I like the ending. That's interesting. I like the ending. I thought it was a nice little. Twisty. I thought it was interesting. That's interesting. We both have a different take on it. That's cool. Yeah, I'll say it just it didn't work right. for me at all. That ending did. Hey, and... I un- I understand. We don't always like the same thing, right? Exactly. And yeah, this one I meant to watch, but I did not get a chance to watch. Oh, the next one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this one, the one that we're just talking about here is Guess Who? Available on Tubi. Tim Davis gave it three stars. Not bad, Tubi. Not bad at all was his uh, tagline for it. So I thought that was pretty fab. And this next one is called Laced. So this is a little sleeper hit. This came out at some film festivals last year, and it just had a uh, worldwide release or a wide release in 2024. It's a 95-minute runtime. The director is also the writer and also stars in it, as we see with a lot of low-budget films. This is low-budget done right. This is, again, a film that took their budget, spent it where they needed to, kept the set simple, um, not a lot of actors, but a really good quality film. Reminds me of the same kind of quality of working within your budget of we need to do something. Oh, okay. That kind of level of using a simple set and being able to use it effectively. Nice. So this could be also a play. This could easily be turned into a play and it'd be fine. Hands down. So in a unprecedented snowstorm, a wife plans to kill her abusive husband and it begins to unravel. Um, the general rating of this right now on Letterbox is a 3.2. Dave Bailey gave it three and a half out of five stars, which I would agree with. I found the characters in this extremely likable. Uh, there was a character that I thought I had seen in more things, but only had two things on Letterbox to her credit. Um, there was another character. He's only been in kind of lower level films. Uh, the main, I guess you would say, quote unquote, protagonist only in a couple of films as well. And the writer was in MFA, which is oh, a well known okay. film yeah. that you and I have seen. So he was quite good. His name is Kyle Buttonoff. And I hope to see more from him. I thought he's a very good director. He's a very good writer. I thought his acting was actually quite good in this. Now, in terms of where you can find this, this is a VOD. So it is available on Apple TV, Google Play, uh, Voodoo, uh, YouTube, Microsoft Store. I would say if you enjoy that kind of simple set, uh, set up of wife trying to murder husband and things don't go the way it's supposed to be, it's light on the gore, but it's very good in the plot development, the character relationships, and the outcome. Okay. Nice. I think this will be a very high rate for Scotty when it comes to relationship horror. Ooh. Yes. I think this will definitely be, I think if you had watched this movie, this would be your top movie out of all these. Nice. Okay. Cam, yeah, this is one that I will be trying to watch this week for sure. I think you and Erica would enjoy it. I think it's interesting and it's well done. So definitely um, we have a screener. We're very lucky, but if for anyone else, I do recommend renting it. If what I've described sounds like it's right for you. And it is called laced. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah, the next one, um, I ended up watching and told you to check it out. Uh, this one is available to rent on Amazon right now, but uh, it is called The Vampire Next Door. Uh, it's got a 111-minute runtime, and I'm only going to read part of the synopsis because the, uh, the bottom half kind of spoils the ending. Um, but when 20-year-old Cameron discovers he has a female vampire living next door, she enlists him to help her avenge the murder of a former lover. Cameron reluctantly agrees and goes along on the adventure. And I will stop there for the synopsis. But this is basically a mix of, you know, rear window, fright night, those types of spying on your neighbor next door type scenarios. And, well, fright night, obviously, because it's a vampire. Um, but the one thing, like, this movie didn't have a lot of, like, horror, per se. This is definitely more like a comedy, romantic comedy mixed with, like, mm-hmm. having a vampire involved. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is 
I found it to be pretty funny in parts, and I actually really liked the three, the four main characters: his coworker, his the neighbor, the main guy himself, and the woman he has a crush on. I Agreed. liked all four of them a lot. Like, and uh, I thought they all had really good chemistry together. They all just uh, worked well together, and it was just one of those movies where I was able to watch it, and the time just flew by. I didn't feel the runtime, and just had a good time with it. Like, I, it's nothing amazing, but yeah, it was just a very easy, just lighthearted watch. I agree. And fun fact: Taylor King, who played the coworker, the assistant manager, was the writer for Super Hot and the director. Oh no shit. Right. And this guy, so the main guy that was in here, Alex Matthews, was also in Super Hot. Ah, that's where I recognize him from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of obviously they're friends because when I was watching this, I'm like, fuck, this reminds me of Super Hot. Yeah. Right. It just the way it's filmed, the dialogue, it's low budget done right. Like if you like Super Hot and you enjoy that kind of low budget film, You'll like this movie, but it's not a super quick moving movie. It probably overstays its welcome at 111 minutes. But that being said, that's a minor criticism. I do think this is a movie worth watching if you like films such as Super Hot, for example, or um, the insurance sales one that we watched a couple of years ago. Oh, where the, yeah. Right. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Yeah, but, yeah, it's been a while. Right. But that like this falls into that category. So. Definitely do recommend it. Um, did you want to say for us up here in Canada, it's just available on Amazon. Is that where it is yeah. for you? Or Yeah, that's all there was here is uh, to rent on Amazon. Yeah, same here. So I think if you like that, go ahead and rent it. Um, yeah. Did you watch this final one or just me? This is the one that I told you about. Right. Do you want to start then? Uh, sure. So, yeah, this next one, I had heard a little talk about it last year from our good buddy Venom from uh, Fresh Cuts and No More Room in Hell. Uh, it was in his honorable mentions last year, and uh, that I'd seen that Jason Lloyd was watching it this year, saying he just came out on Tubi, and uh, apparently uh, what Venom watched was like a limited theatrical release, because where he lives, he gets a lot of those. Lucky bastard. <laughs> but uh, um, but I, I went into this one uh, kind of just curious to see what it was about, and this one is called Hunter Kill Her, and it's a 98-minute runtime, uh, Synopsis a desperate young mother, Karen, takes a job as the night shift janitor at a large furniture factory. She is told that she is the only one working at this time, but after seeing a strange vehicle idling in the parking lot and finding a door to the factory ajar, she gets the feeling she might not be alone after all. Um, yeah, this is kind of like a slasher, but almost like the final act of a slasher because it's just... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's getting hunted down by these guys. There's no other really victims besides her fighting back. Um, I thought a lot of what, because, you know, for me, a lot of what a character decision-making can either make or break a movie, and I thought a lot of the decisions she made in this to try to survive were really smart. I agreed, agreed. Like, she tried all sorts of different things. Like, yeah, there's a few things I was kind of like, well, why didn't she do yeah. that? But it was nothing major. No. But um, the only thing I will say, like, because, yeah, even the, I love the masks of the bad guys. They were creepy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing that I kept, Erica and I kept joking about, or I kept joking about with Erica, was, like, the voices they were using for these guys and the lines they were saying made them sound like fucking uh, the Joker's goons from Batman. Oh, my God, totally. That is a <laughs> great comparison. Absolutely. Like, oh, it's the bat. That's kind of like the dumb dialogue. <laughs> Let's get her. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. That's exactly what it sounded like. like that, and, and yeah, like uh, the reveal at the end, uh, like I didn't expect that. And I did think the guy went a little over the top, but that also is very believable as well. Cause that's yeah. But um, all in all, I found I enjoyed it. it. Once again, it's another three out of five for me. Like it was, it went by quickly. Um, had a good setting, the being alone. Like I've experienced that obviously working alone cleaning late at night and just, you know, kind of being on edge because you never know who's going to be around you or show mm-hmm. up at your building. Uh, so, yeah, definitely set some tense moments. But, yeah, there, I wish there would have been, like, some uh, some victims or way, uh, bystanders that were still at the shop or whatever that got killed just to kind of wrap up the body count a little bit. Yeah. Make it feel yeah, more that's like a slasher. That's fair. And just wish they didn't have the Joker goons voices. But <laughs> other than that... <laughs> 
I like felt I, like this was a survival film. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I felt like this was more of a survival. Actually, that's a good one back in that. Right. You know, I can think about it in that. You're right. Um, because I agree with you. It wasn't really a slasher. It was a survival. Like, it was yeah. this one character trying to survive the night, the end, right? Um, I I feel like this was really up there with uh, The Night of the Hunted last year that came out on Shudder that I think a lot of people skipped over. I, I think it's great survival horror. I think it's a good free watch on Tubi. It's quick. You know, at 98 minutes, it's not overstaying. It's welcome. You know, I read a review here that's like, the acting's so bad. Dude, this is a fucking horror movie. Like, what do you expect? Fucking Oscar worthy? Right, well, I think, th- I'm wondering if his uh, comment is basically what I was saying about, like, about the, the goons. Lines. Yeah, because it just sounds like they were just, like, dumb Batman's villains goons. <laughs> yeah, and that's fair, too, right? But I didn't find her a poor her actress. Acting, I thought no, her she acting was, was fine, yeah. right? So I can see most people here have given it three stars. I'd probably sit in the same amount. I enjoyed it. I thought it was an easy watch. And again, expectations are low here coming into early 2024. We we got to wait to pick up the good shit. But in terms of did I have a good enough time with it and did I enjoy watching it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm not going to make any lists, but I enjoyed it. It was fun. And that is available on Tubi. And if for some reason you do want to pay for it, it is available on Amazon Apple, Google, and YouTube, as always. Yep, and um, I'll just say, uh, Tim Davis, uh, give it a watch, because I know you're trying to watch as many as you can right now, too. And it's not going to, I don't think it'll be a complete waste of your time. It's nothing great, but yeah, give it a watch. Well, if he wants to be a real podcaster like you and I and increase the right. you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm only at seven, so I don't know how this year is going to go. Yeah, I'm at six, so. Yeah, we're we're slowly, we're like little turtles trying to watch these fucking horror movies. We're we're moving slowly. I think I, I, think, I think February, I like I think February, we'll we'll start seeing some more good ones hopefully. Winnie the Pooh, fucking Blood and Honey, baby. Oh, uh, I hope that comes up. Yeah, Terrifier three coming out later too. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! I can't wait to see the Mickey Mouse one. The the oh, uh, Steamboat the... Willie or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be really funny. I've already seen the trailer. It looks ridiculous. I can't wait. Oh, it totally does. I'm I'm, I'm totally down. <laughs> I'm down the clown. So for older watches, I watch the Toolbox Murders Ooh. from. 1978, 70, 93 minute run. Have you seen it? I'm trying to remember if I, because I watched, I know I watched the remake, so I'm looking up to see if I've watched the original or not. I feel I have. I feel like you have. This is very much a 1978 horror film. The uh, the opening slice and dice of multiple women seeing uh, the conversation about whether women were sluts or not and if they deserved it or not. Oh, makes boy. My, my 2024 brain hurt but hey you know what it was 1978 baby and this is what we got i respect this film for when it came out in 1978 i can appreciate the original stalker you know killer fucking vibes of this he kidnaps a young girl and ties her up and wants to like i don't know make make her his new daughter because his daughter died blah 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 it is okay for me this is nothing i will watch again um, watched it to just, you know, put it on the checkbox list of watching the OGs. Again, glad I watched it, but it wasn't anything that really stood out. Maybe if I had watched it in the 70s, it would have stood out more to me, but it was kind of just okay. All right, yeah, because I'm looking and it doesn't look like I've ever logged it. And uh, I've watched the Toby Hooper remake from like early 2000s, but must never have watched the 78 version. Did you like the remake? Yeah, the remake was okay. Okay. Okay, that's fair. It wasn't terrible. It was at the time when I first watched it, I didn't even know it was a remake, and because I, I bought it ring as a blind buy on DVD back in the day, and I was like, "Oh, oh this wow. is good." And then rewatched it a couple years later, and I'm going, "Yeah, it was okay." <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Sometimes when you watch it with fresh eyes, you're like, "This is actually not that good." <laughs> you're right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the older watch that I brought, uh, Erica and I did our Tubi Tuesdays, which were are kind of few and far between nowadays just because we're either video gaming together on Tuesdays or just kind of busy. But um, she brought up this one because uh, she was shocked I had not watched it, and that is The Silence from 2019, which was a Netflix original. Uh, the tagline is, they're listening. With the world under attack by deadly creatures who hunt by sound, a teen and her family seek refuge outside the city and encounter a mysterious cult. This was... Oh. This one came out roughly maybe like six months after a quiet place or whatever um okay. but it stars uh kiernan shipka who was in uh uh crap what the hell is the name of it now one of the titles oh uh black coat's daughter she was sabrina the teenage witch oh, okay. in the sabrina series on netflix cool. cool 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 and totally killer 
she's the main nice. character in that. Nice. But uh, yeah, I watched this, and yeah, it is definitely like you know they took the quiet place and just kind of did their own story with it or whatever. Yeah. But I like this much better than Quiet Place because uh, these what? characters. Well, for one, there isn't the stupid thing that always pisses me off in the Quiet Place with. Hey, we're dealing with creatures that hunt by sound, even the slightest sound. You know what we need to do? We need to have a fucking baby. <laughs> Fuck out of here. I could that that pisses me off to know I am and, done and the quiet pull place. out game was weak and he just I don't know when they had time to fuck, to be yeah, honest. It, it, I don't get I don't know. You get yeah, me. But yeah, yeah, they don't have any of that in here. And they you know, they do have a dog that's with them, but they let it go outside on purpose because they're like, it's going to come after. These things are going to come after us. We have to do this or cause yeah. the dog won't stop barking. And that was heartbreaking. But yeah, but I found the creatures to be like creepy. They're almost like uh, ancient looking bats and just vicious looking. Um, but yeah, I found and they don't deal with like a weird cult of the hushed, I think is what they call themselves. The hushed. <laughs> yep. Cause they, none of them speak and just trying to survive in this world and, it was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good movie. Oh, I'm glad I watched it. Oh, so a nice little spicy thing to bring up. Is it still on the Netflix or? Yep, this is like a Netflix original, so it's going to be there. Awesome. I don't see them taking it off anytime soon. Awesome. So for those people that like The Quiet Place or Bird Box or anything that has to do with, like, no sight, no sound, this is for them? Yeah. There you go. Tim Davis. There you go. We gave you another. It's not 2024, but, you know, it's something. Yeah. Knowing Tim something. Davis probably has already seen this because I know like, like this was and he's probably like insulted that I made fun of it, uh, like it more than The Quiet Place. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, oh, now I can't listen to this podcast anymore. You were dead to me, Scotty. Dead to me. <laughs> oh. Well, that's our two nice little older watches that we brought to the table. We haven't done this for a long time, but what's new? I've been recently wish- listening to this uh, Real Survival Stories podcast by Noiser, and it's actually really good. So for anyone here who likes survival horror, this is told by the actual people that survived, and some of these stories are crazy. Like, one guy survived being in the ocean for fucking almost 48 hours. No lifeboat. No Ooh, life boy. jacket. Stayed afloat treading water for that long. Oh, boy. That's fucking insane. Yeah. That's insane. Anyway. Um, this is a really, really cool survival podcast. It's not really horror, but I don't know. All of these could be made into survival horror movies, and everyone would be fucking digging the fuck out of them. Um, there's one about a bear attack where a kid had to fend off a fucking grizzly bear. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's heavy. Like, it's a pretty, pretty good little podcast. And it, the narration's really good. It kind of flows quickly. The episodes are, like, 45 minutes to 47 minutes. I recommend it. It is by Noiser, so if you do have the Noiser app. If not, you can just go on Spotify or any place you get your podcast. And if you like survival horror, it is called The Real Survival Stories. And you will dig the fuck out of it. So, did you have anything Thanks. for what's new? Did you Anything you've been listening to or anything cool? Uh, nothing new that I've been listening to, uh, and I've Mainly the only thing I've been really doing is uh, when I get a chance, I've been reading the rules for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition because I'm getting ready to uh, be a dungeon master for my first time ever and run a campaign for Jaden, my youngest. Well, that's a pretty elaborate campaign for you guys having a sex party, you and Erica. Like, that oh, seems a little, like, work. Is she going to be the dragon? Like, how is this going to work that invades your dungeon? You, you know, you bring that up after I bring up our youngest, and that, that's just wrong. Well, no, that's the fun family version. I'm wondering where the adult version is of the game that you're going to play. <laughs> oh, that'll be me being a uh, being a bard, and I'll be trying to seduce her. <laughs> She's like, fuck's sake, Scott. Can we please just go to bed? <laughs> I'm uh... fucking tired. Fucking tired. You know what I'm tired of, Scott? Do you think? Well, I'll lead into this. For out of the dark, I'm tired of people thinking their short films can become full length features. Skinnerink, fucking Skinnerink, stop making full length films out of short films that aren't meant to be. Or and movies was, that should just be a short film. <laughs> should just be a short film. So this was inspired inspired from Night Swim. So this is going to be a – we're going to do a little bit of a spoiler review from Night Swim because there's just some things that we need to talk about Night Swim. <laughs> there's just some things we need to address. So 
Scott gave a great pot, plot synopsis earlier with this guy that used to be in the major leagues. He's had this injury. They obviously have money because they buy this really nice house with a pool that's not filled in. Like, it's empty, and it looks all kind of, like, leafy and shit. They go to, like, fill it in. He cuts his fucking hand and black shits, <laughs> like, comes out of the fucking drain. <laughs> Like, can you say every single fucking Japanese horror movie they just ripped off in that scene? Right. Right? But I think what really stood out to me is once they get the pool all filled up, instead of these fuckers going out and buying actual pool toys, they make their kids swim for quarters. So they have this fucking jar of quarters that they fucking... <laughs> I have never gone swimming for quarters. If I threw fucking quarters into a pool, people would be like, you're going to clog the filter. What the fuck are you doing? I was going to say, like, (laughs) when they were throwing the quarters in here, the the adult version of me is just going, that's going to get sucked into the filter. It's going to burn out the filter. And then you're going to have to spend a bunch of money to fix that filter. What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? The moment I saw that, I was watching it on a Friday night. I was watching it with George. We had had a bunch of drinks. And I was like, this is fucking stupid. Why can't they afford fucking pool toys? That right, was geez, my fucking, first thought. Like, I mean, shit, we had those types of toys in the 90s in my grandma's swimming pool. They're heavy, like, rings that you can throw in. And you can go underwater and grab them. And... <laughs> Right? What the fuck? People can't even afford pool toys. And I think the opening scene, I'm forgetting about the opening scene of the little girl whose brother is hooked up to some kind of oxygen thing. Somehow his toy shitty boat that came from the dollar store is now back in the pool. And she goes down with her little bunny slippers to go retrieve it. And what I found so interesting about this is we find out later on that was the previous family. The pool has evil water. The water comes from a spring that gives life but takes life. Like, it it gives you something, but it demands a life in return. That's that's what the water does, right? Yes. Okay. The water heals you. It is basically, (laughs) it is a evil version of a fountain of youth. Right? So then... The best part of this movie, the the quarters was quite good. And then and then we have the of course the mother figures it out, right? She's putting two and two together. Of course, because it's easy cause, to figure out. Right? Because her husband's getting really weird because he keeps doing hydrotherapy in the pool and now he can like hit the ball baseball to the point that the fucking peeling of the leather comes off the baseball and all this other shit. And talking to this fucking bitch that oh the coast beforehand. And she's like, and she's, you see the portraits of this woman and her son. So the daughter got sucked into the pool, the original family. And I guess the son then was able to like live a happy go lucky life where he became rich and famous or whatever the case is. And like, she's like, oh, my daughter sucks. She had to die. I'm like, why did the daughter suck? She seems like a pretty nice kid to me. This little girl got oh, out right. of the bed to go get her brother's toy. And she's like, sacrifices had to be made. We never find out what made the daughter so shitty. <laughs> she had right. You figured made. the mother would be like devastated <laughs> by losing her little daughter. But no, no. And she's just like, oh, yeah, my boy's doing so good and blah, blah, blah. And this and that. And then. Well, not only is she talking about this shit, there's also (laughs) somehow, I don't understand how this fucking works, but a fountain in her house that somehow (laughs) magically refills itself with the water from the pool. Because why, how, you're not even in the same subdivision, so how are you getting this water that's in this pool and refilling? And then you're also got pictures of water that are also from the stream. What? None of that made any fucking sense. None of it made sense. And then, so anyway, I'll save everybody the reveal because apparently the real reveal is that there's all these ghosts that live and they have a fuck. Okay, wait, one more thing. So they have a fucking pool party and the real estate agent's like, oops, a daisy, never told you that someone died in the pool. Oopsie. I, I just love the house so much. I didn't want to tell you that some fucking eight year old drowned and they never found her fucking body. Like, how the fuck does that shit work? This kid drowns in the pool. They never find the body. And I was like, oh, well, All right, let's just <laughs> sweep it under the rug. Like, it's just so fucking shitty writing. So the end, you know, the dad sacrifices himself to the pool demon or whatever. I don't know, the waters, whatever it's supposed to be. 
And the scene I couldn't stop laughing at was at the end, we got the mom and the two kids. And this is, I'm assuming, like, the next day. Or, like, the day, like, not super far removed. Yeah. Right? They drain the water from the pool. And they're like, well, and the mom's like, we could just move and start fresh. And the kid's like, dad wouldn't want that. Right. <laughs> he wouldn't want someone else to be taken over by the pool. And she's like, honestly, Scott, I was dying. She puts her hands on her hips. So her, like, you're right. We need to... We need to take care of this pool. I'm like, who fucking wrote this shit? Like, what the fuck is going on here? My and friend's son recently did a cartoon. He had better writing as a 14-year-old boy than this <laughs> fucking movie did. It was so oh. stupid. And they fell in the fucking pool, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's the, it's the dumbest fucking movie I've seen this year. It, it was... Oh. Like, congratulations, big budget Blumhouse. I think think rob humphrey said it right first worst film of the year <laughs> right and here's well no scalper is the worst film of the year but well for this is for me for what i've right? seen but here's the thing and this is what this came down to so i was talking to mr Branner orlick formerly from the exploding heads podcast and he's like well that was actually a short and he's like and the short was actually really scary so it was just a woman swimming in the pool and she keeps seeing a vision of something outside the pool which does happen in this film right but when it finally comes into focus, it's her dead. So she's looking at a doppelganger of herself, dead, bloated from the water. Hmm. And then it cuts. So a great short. A great short. Yeah. And I think sometimes we can't let things just be shorts. No. And this is where we kind of run into that danger, right? Is that when you have a short film, it is it is a quick dialogue, a quick square, a scare. So for example... Um, there's a short film that was one of my top disturbing, which is where a woman and her sister are in the house. The sister dies and the woman lets the babies die. Yep. And you hear the slow guitar. <clears throat> like, to, you cannot make that into a full length film. Like, that would just no. be a scene in the film. But the film itself would just be like basically a murder mystery. And I think that's where these shorts go wrong. Like, I can't think of um, another short that was as bad as this one as of late. Like, something that was a short that never should have been made into a full length. But did you think of any one besides this one? Like, that shouldn't have been made into a full length. That got made into a full um, length, and you were like, what the fuck happened here? Well, the one that I, I was not a fan of at the time, and I haven't watched it since, so my thoughts may change, but uh, Lights Out. Yeah. That was a short and I Yeah, that should have stayed. Short, short worked great, but yeah. Just I remember seeing that in the drive in and it was just it, it felt too long and then uh And cheesy. Like that one's cheesy. Like it's yeah. cheesy the stuff that happens in it, yeah. But yeah, like uh that list you gave me and I'm I was going through it and like there was one and I forgot already which one it was. Uh so Well, I'll go through, through them. It. So these are considered the ones that that became so 10 shorts that became great full-length movies so the first one is mama i didn't know mama was a short film yeah and i never actually seen it right so mama is basically these two little girls are raised by an entity and then rescued they become feral and they call it mama it's basically a spirit of some kind um definitely it was made into a decent full-length film i never saw the short um, but I do think that that was well done. The next one was Trick or Treat. Yep. Right, Trick or Treat. Um, I didn't know that was a short as well. Yep, they actually have the short on the uh, special edition of the DVD. It's like a, basically like a, just a little mini cartoon. That's cool, right? Yeah. So that was an experience. That definitely, that's a great anthology, right? So again, but he expanded on the character of Sam, and Sam wasn't the main focus of the entire film. Right, exactly. Right. And then we have What We Do in the Shadows was apparently a short. It was just interviews with vampires. And then they made yeah, see, I didn't know that. Yeah, right? So that's an example of where it went well. When a Stranger Calls, I actually find When a Stranger Calls really boring. I, I was going to say, that is one that should have just stayed a short. Right? Um, I feel like drag out When the Stranger Calls. Like, the sitter story is perfect the length that it is. Yeah. Um, it doesn't need to be made into a full-length film. Ma Michael Flanagan's Oculus was originally really? a short. Yeah, so in the short, so in 2005, Mike Flanagan made the short film Oculus Chapter 3, The Man with the Plan, with only one actor, setting, and mirror. Oculus Chapter 3 sees the man's attempt to capture the evil entity living in the mirror on camera, but this task soon takes on the toll on his sanity. Oh. So this was short was a critical success with studios' interest in expanding into a full-length movie. 
So I think the full-length movie is actually quite entertaining, and it does definitely yeah. build on that concept, which is what the ending scene is for Oculus, basically. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. And then, of course, we all know All Hallows Eve and Terrifier. Oh, yeah. Now, that's a good example of a short becoming a film. Yeah, exactly. All Hallows Eve. I, I, I think, and I know it's a different guy that played Art the Clown in All Hallows Eve, but there was still, he was in a couple of stories in All Hallows Eve, Art the Clown was. He was in the Subway story. Yeah, but I around, believe, around. and I believe there was even a short before All Hallows Eve that was just about was Art there? the Clown. Because, yeah, I'd never seen it, but I heard about it. So, two short films starring both the Terrifier, the Ninth Circle, and the Terrifier. So, that's kind of cool. Smile was originally a short. See, I didn't know that either. I didn't know that either as well, right? That one was a damn good movie. I fucking love that movie. So the original short was called Laura Hasn't Slept, and it was released in 2020. It follows Laura Weaver as she tells her therapist about a reoccurring nightmare about a sinister man who constantly smiles at her. However, Laura realizes she's living her nightmare as a doctor's as a doctor morphs into a horrible creature that demands Laura look at it. Oh, huh. interesting. Right? So that's pretty cool. That's a good transition into a uh, full length. And The Evil Dead. Yes, this one did have a very, very, very low budget short film. I forget the name of it. And it starred Bruce Campbell. Um, it was, you know, directed by Sam Raimi and all that, too. But it was, like, yeah, very hard to see because it was shot mm-hmm. at night and all this stuff. And But, yeah, like, just seeing that little snippet of what the Evil Dead became. It's yeah. kind of insane. Yeah, right? I think that's pretty cool. And then we have The Babadook was originally a short film. Hmm. I didn't know that either. So the short film is called The Monster. And it follows a mother whose imaginative child is convinced there's a monster in the house and is going to harm them. The mother eventually comes across the monster and stops it from harming her son and orders it back to the closet. Very much like in the Babadook, the monster isn't completely gone and the monster feeds it from time to time. The monster was shown at different festivals, gaining attention and allowing it to become a full-length featured film. So it sounds like they moved it pretty quickly into being a full-length feature. They actually just kept with the same concept, only probably adding more of how long it took for to discover what the monster was and all that other right. shit, right? And there was one that's not on the list that uh, I was always thinking about, too. But, oh, yeah? Because uh, I had watched the short before the feature length even got announced, and then I was, like, surprised. And that's the stylist, the short form. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's another good example of a short that was made into a full length film yeah because I, I watched that like about two years before the full length one came out right yeah that's a really good example scotty and then the number one here is the saw franchise was was possibly thanked to a short film by james wan and nia wangnell the saw the saw short film sees david a hospital orderly who tells a police officer about his kidnapping during which he was forced to commit a horrific act in order to survive takes the key off of reverse bear trap on his head out of another person's body who was unconscious but alive. Huh. I didn't know about that one either. Right? So there's a lot of shorts out there that have been made into really good films. But I think it's important when you're taking a short and you're deciding if you're going to make it into a full-length film. You need to decide if that concept is something that can be massaged out with character development with a build up like and I think that was the biggest problem with Night Swim. Yeah. Is that if they had kept it as when you go into the pool you see really scary images, well then don't go swimming. <laughs> right. That's the easiest solution, right? But then is there something like you go into the pool once and then you're haunted because some girl drowned in the pool and no one paid attention. Like a you know, one of those typical like ghost stories. And would not be as, oh my gosh, the waters come from this ancient stream and you know it's part of this kind of like mixed background of of fountain of youth gone bad i understand how that sounds appealing because it sounds more complex but sometimes from what i'm seeing with these shorts that became big it was just taking a simplistic concept and then expanding it further right exactly. by keeping just, to the original thread right yep and kind of uh knowing like because i have a feeling the people that made these shorts had an idea for a much longer film, but right. were only able to do a short because they could budget. 
right? And that makes sense, right? You do a short to kind of bring to the film festival. See, like what happened with the Babadook? Yeah. Right. So she did this short. She took it to film festivals. Eventually, someone wanted to pick it up. Um, the guys that did Talk to Me had a YouTube channel, and I'm yeah. pretty sure they had a short based on Talk to Me. I, I can't quote me or something along those lines. Um, so like it's it can be done. But I think the issue is that it needs to be done with a storyline that can be massaged out enough. And I think when you change too much from the original short, people tend to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Right. And it kind of gets down to the point where you're like, how does this make any sense at all? Like Thanksgiving is technically from the commercial, the fake trailer. (laughs) Right. Right. They expanded that into a good story. Right. So it, it can definitely be done. And we've seen it done many times. It's just, it's interesting when it's done like it is in Night Swim. And I don't know, maybe Night Swim was just released as a quick cash grab. You know, there's not a lot going on in the theaters, Blumhouse is, and and Blumhouse has had so many successes that one write-off of not a good film, who fucking cares, right? Like, Right, well, and the fact that even with it not being a good film, they still made over their budget. Like, they've, they it banked because it was a horror film in theaters. You know why? Because they used quarters instead of pool toys. They exactly. saved all that money. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not fuck using movie. fucking pool toys. And that really stayed with me. I'm like, why can't they use pool toys? I who thought that the entire quarters time. into the fucking pool. Like, who? These people are supposed to be What is this, goddamn rich. wishing well? <laughs> right? Like, this guy is supposed to be a... And I didn't really recognize the two stars. Did you Did you know them? Nope. Because people have talked about, like, they know who they are. And I'm like, how do I not really know who these two people are? Yeah, but like, I didn't I recognize don't... them. Yeah, like, I really kind of was like, who the fuck? Who the fuck are these fuckers that just showed? Yeah, I double check, like, I, the wife. I'm starting to think, like, maybe I remembered the wife, but I might be thinking of like, different Like, maybe movie. from a popular TV show or something? But honestly, when she put her hands on the hip at the end and was like, you're right, we should fill in the pool. That's what your dad would want. I'm like, no, the dad would want to be still fucking alive. That's right? what you would want. That, yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the want. names of them, and yeah, I don't I, yeah, I don't know who they are. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, did you figure it out? Uh, at least the father, uh, Wyatt Russell. That's Kurt Russell's son. That's why he looked familiar. Okay. Oh no, man. It was. Yeah. It was. It was not. I don't know. I. It's a shame. This was a situation where. <sighs> Yeah, no. Yeah, no. But we'll see. I, I'm not sure what the next theater release will be. Imaginary looks pretty good, but you know what? You never know which way that's going to go, right? Right. And then there was also a Founders Day that came out that just kind of came and went. So I don't know if that was any good or not. But well, Founders oh. Day? I don't even know if it got a release up here. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if it's in theaters anymore. But yeah, it was just, it seems like it came and went. Like, let me look real quick. Oh, yeah, look it on. up. I'm curious if... Uh, if it got much of a release, like obviously in LA where someone like Venom from Fresh Cuts is on, you're going to see more of those films. But I don't know. Sometimes out here we don't get the the fly by night, right? Yeah. And I was saying usually with horror films that are just kind of quietly released, right? they get pushed out by all the bigger releases. And yeah, yeah. it's already it's already out of theaters here. Yeah. And any news on it? Have you known anyone that's seen it or? Uh, one of my buddies went to go see it, but I never heard if it was any good or not. Well, that's probably not a good sign. Well, him and I usually don't talk a lot, so like he would he was asking if I wanted to go see it, but I wasn't able to that night. You were like, No, I see good films. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I see terrible films. That's that's what I do for the show. Right? <clears throat> not wrong. I'm interested to see what the new Strangers Imagining is going to look like. Because when you mentioned the trailer park horror from Guess Who, I automatically went to str- The Strangers Pray at Night. Yes. Right? Because that's actually not a bad sequel. It's very different from the first one. Right. But it's, but... it's more of a thriller chaser survival one, but it's quite good. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I, I have low hopes for the Strangers trilogy. Cause oh, the... really? Yeah. I. I'm keeping my expectations very low on that because I think it's being directed by Rennie Harland, who is, uh, I think, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 and uh, Independence Day sequel and shit like that, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. Could be a different director, but... Oh, my. Yeah, it just... Yeah. I I have very low hopes. Well, Fangoria said that they're excited for True Detective Night Country. And I got to say, from watching the original season, the first season of True Detective, absolutely. That's probably better than all the <laughs> other movies that have come out so far. Um, yeah, that's already, and I've been hearing good things. Let's see, uh, I think it's like a couple episodes in. 
And there's this movie coming out called Big Head. Big I, Head. Yeah, I, I remember watching the trailer and I it looked interesting. So it's a, a shape-shifting creature. This sounds like it was a short at one time. That will let you speak to lost loved ones, but not without consequences. Hmm. And it will be in UK theaters on January 26th. Lisa Frankenstein, which I think there's been some buzz about. Mm -hmm. Um, Out of the Darkness. This is an indigenous one. So it's a historical of 45,000 years ago. Uh, There's a monstrous thing in the landscape. So some kind of monster skeleton in the closet. This looks like it could go either way. It's on going to be on a shutter. So February 9th. So that's coming up. All right. Skeletons in the closet. So and see. stop motion. Uh, it's about a stop motion film. History of evil. Also on shutter coming out January 23rd. And then yes, the imaginary. That'd be interesting. I'm interesting to see what the imaginary is like. I'm curious. Yeah, I'll say I'm, my expectations are low for pretty much everything at the moment until... Really? Really? Well, it's, it's early in the year, that's why. Mm, that's fair. Like, did I'm you see the... My, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, I'm keeping my expectations low for now. Just did wait you see, and see what comes out. Did you see the trailer for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? Yeah. That one looks interesting. Yeah, it looks... I'll say, because, yeah, I'm just hoping it's, uh, you know, actually uh, more of an original idea than Ghostbusters Afterlife, because it was a lot of member berries. You know, this actually looks like a good thing on Shudder. Check this baby out. You'll never find me. March 22nd. An isolated man living at the back of a desolate caravan park is visited by a desperate young woman seeking shelter from a violent storm. As the savage storm worsens, the solitude, the solitary souls begin to feel threatened. But who should really be afraid? Hmm. That has some cape. That has some promise. I like the setting. You got two actors. You got a small set, um, and and Shutter can really deliver well on films like that. Can um, yes. <laughs> pick, like you know what I mean? They can really pick up these. And I shouldn't say deliver because they don't make the films. They pick up these films. Right. Um, but this looks like an international film that actually looks pretty good. The first Omen I could give two fucks about, honestly. Yeah, yeah I, I care to relax Like, I, I put that in the Exorcist Believer kind of area. Um, Abigail is about a child vampire ballerina. Yeah, I heard people talking about that one. I'm, another one I'm just like, oh, child, evil child. We'll see. <laughs> it's like it's kind of like Interview with the Vampire, Kristen Dunst character, right? Or uh, let the right one in. Or re- let the right one in for sure. I was thinking more Kristen Dunst because she's more, uh, you know, classy and the right one right. in. She's kind of like scraggly and like yeah. looks kind of homely and stuff, right? And then Return to Silent Hill. I I've seen one of the Silent Hills. It's okay. Yeah, and uh, the first Silent Hills, one of the better video game adaptations, at least it was until the Mario Brothers movie came out. Um. Then Silent Hill 2 was decent. Then there was a lot of uh, computer animated or cartoon style series that were just trash. Um, you know, it's based off a of video game. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, this it looks appealing. I love how Fangoria is pulling from Shudder because this is honestly the most info I've got from Shudder so far. Infested. First off, French film. We already know it's probably going to be decent. Um, creepy crawlers flick focuses on the invasion of venomous spiders, forcing the residents of a suburban building to find a way out trapped in a building, bad trapped in a building with spiders, spiders, quadruple bad arachnophobia vibes only it's French. So this shit will get dark. Curious. Uh And there's also the arachnophobia Uh remake at some point too. Really? They're making, Mm. you know what? That's kind of good because the original is a little, like it's not bad, but it is a product of its time. And I fucking love that movie. Yeah, it's great. It's Here's great for time, of... right? It gave me fear of spiders, but... Yeah, you're right. This The Strangers remake looks interesting. Then we have The Watchers um, with Dakota Fanning. Could be quite good. Quiet Place Day 1. I'm kind of over The Quiet Place. I was over Quiet Place after the first one. Or even during, in the middle of the first one. I was already over it. Right. Uh, there's another Aliens movie coming out. Of course, we got Beetlejuice, Speak No Evil, which is a remake of the Dutch film, which I don't know. I don't really know how the American remake is going to stand up to that. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Smile 2, October 18th. So that is coming out. Terrifier 3, you mentioned. Ryan Gosling will be in Wolfman. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll see a lot of shots with the shirt off. That sounds pretty and much right. like uh And Jordan Peele's fourth film will be announced sometime this year. Good old Jordan Peele's coming back in the ring 
again. Yeah, but I wonder if that is the project that he's doing with Hideo Kojima, the video game guy, because there's supposed to be a movie and a game coming out almost simultaneously called OD. Hmm. And I know Jordan Peele's involved with it. I don't know if he was producing um, the movie coming out to tie in with the game or what, but curious. Interesting. Well, there seems to be some very interesting one. Of course, we have Maxine, the third yep. installment. Which I'm um, definitely down for that. Yeah, what do you think of that Mira Goth kicking a extra story? I don't know a lot about it. Yeah, I read a little bit about it. Uh, don't know if I, like, you know, just like everybody, like, you know, any victim, I, you know, I wait till there's more proof to fully yeah. believe their story because you never know. But, yeah. like, the one thing I just shake my head at, though, is uh, the guys commenting, why the fuck's he complaining? I'd let her kick me. It's like, see, this is where we're having issues, people. It's like, if a woman's woman did this, like, or a woman had this yeah. happen to her, everybody be up in arms. But mm-hmm. since it's a guy, you guys are all just like, oh, I'd let her kick me. Like, for fuck's sakes. Dumb sh- shitty comments. Now, here's a film that's going to gaslit me this year. Already I know it will, and you're already going to tell me it sucks, because I'm going to give you the, the lowdown, and then we'll lead to the end of our episode. There's a film coming out this year called Little Bites, and it's from the team that brought us Bury the Bride in Allegory. Oh, for fuck's sakes. You'll see a lot of iconic faces in this 70s set monster movie that highlights the length of a parent will go to protect their child. My number one for 2024 is Little Bites. <laughs> well, if it's the team that brought us those two movies, then that means Spider One, probably, the brother of Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. So, and like I say, I didn't hate Barry the Bride. I had a lot of issues with it. And yes. I thought Allegory was Average. decent. Yeah. yeah. But so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, if he gets better as a filmmaker. So I will probably watch it. Oh, it's my number one movie. We don't even have to do this podcast. Oh, we, we already know that. We, uh, bite, especially, especially if Scott Taylor Compton's in it, 100%. Oh. Like, I don't even understand what other movies I could possibly want to watch this year. That, I can tell you what my my top ten is. Smile 2, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, Go Suck My Dick, Everybody. That's uh, that's going to be a fucking fabulous film. Steamboat Mickey Mouse. Yep, Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie, fuck yeah, number three. Um, Let's see here, what else is coming out this year that sounds like a Heather film that looks really cheesy? Oh, let's do the First Omen. First Omen 2. I'm gonna oh, love hundred percent, hundred percent. And I saw another. I, I saw you'll love this. I didn't even read it out to you. There's a there's a movie coming out this year. Check how original's concept is. Okay, she's a nun, but she gets pregnant. Oh no. And where do you? What kind of baby do you think it is? Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Never been done before. Can you no. believe it? Shock. I know. And she's in a remote village. Even crazier. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That means, like, someone's going to have to go to the remote village. Well, I'm watching this movie at least 20 times this year. Oh, my God. Like, number fucking two of the year. Like, I... (laughs) Blown away. (laughs) Original, original, original. Blown the fuck away. Original. It's kind of like the Strangers remake. And, again, like, I liked the original Strangers remake. Oh, I love the original. And it it really is a first-time watch. You know what I mean? A first-time only watch. Because once you watch it, you think so? You think you can watch it multiple times? I've watched it multiple times, and I still oh, love okay. it. Did it what, what enjoyed more on the second watches? Was it just, like, watching how the whole thing came together kind of thing? More or less watching, like, seeing them in the <laughs> background more, like, spotting mm. the, spotting them just, like, everywhere else, and just... Yeah, yeah. And the character, and just, like, the tension still there in okay. that guy. The use of, uh, use of, you know, creating jump scares without any music cues and stuff like that, I noticed more. Fair. And, there. If there's just more for me to appreciate, I think Pray at Night is more of a rewatchable one, just for the fact that it's more just like a slasher film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, but uh, and I was right. It is Rennie Harlan that is directing those. And what makes me just go, uh, I have no... <laughs> what make, like you know, him as a director, fine, whatever. Well, yeah. He didn't do, he didn't do the Independence Day movies. I was wrong about that. But he did do Nightmare Four and. Uh, Deep Blue Sea, and like he's got a bunch of other movies under his belt. Okay. But the ma- part that makes me just go, oh, what the fuck ever is The Strangers. It's going to be a trilogy. Like right off the bat, they're calling it a trilogy. It's not going to wait to see how successful it's going to be or anything like that. Nope. It's a trilogy. We're already telling you that now. 
like, eh, yeah, sure, go for it. Make a trilogy of a series that only had two movies. Smart. And that, like, the two movies didn't even connect, really. Yeah. Like, they kind of did. Like, it was the same people, but it wasn't really... Yeah, so I'm... Right? Expectations low. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I'll watch it, but... I'll watch oh. it, but keeping the expectations low. I didn't even tell you that there's a second Kong and Godzilla movie coming out this year. Oh, oh, I've seen the trailer. Oh, you know. Okay. Oh yeah, Kong and yeah. Zilla are buddies. It looks fun. Right? It looks like dumb fun. Right. I uh, I imagine Godzilla and you are like you and me, like fighting. You know, the first one they're fighting in the water, and then like I'm gonna assume that I'm Godzilla, the asshole, and like you're not sure if you're gonna help me, and then my jaws being pried open because well. We all know that would happen. And and you come over last minute and save me. Uh, and you pull the robot Godzilla up. I, I'm not going to lie. As much as I make fun of that movie, I got emotional at that scene. I'm like, <laughs> they're going to breathe the fire down Godzilla's throat. And, and it's over. <laughs> and then I'm like, and the mu-. And like, George is like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, King Kong saved him. And you know, that's good. Because they're just <laughs> two monsters just trying to fucking survive. You know? <laughs> oh good lord i love it and it's not a great movie like no, it's, it's not. quite entertaining but it's yeah not like amazing but no, it's, it's not, quite yeah. entertaining it's gonna definitely be one of those summer blockbusters you know what i oh, mean yeah. oh yeah yeah because I, I think that's coming out in like may it's coming out in may and i really hope we're done with jurassic worlds like i really hope yep, they already announced there's another one. Oh coming. no fucking way what else is there to do good <sighs> talk about more insects but like it wasn't even that. It was like <laughs> the opening scene where like dinosaurs live among us now, and you're like going for a hike, and then you get like taken out by a raptor. Like it's so fucking yeah. ridiculous. They get they just gotta continue funding Chris Pratt to continue being Chris Pratt. That's all it is. Like Chris Pratt and Bryce, what's her face? Whatever. Bryce Dallas Howard. Yes. Oh yeah, Ron Howard's daughter. This is why she's fucking Ron Howard's daughter. That's why. Oh, and I'm it's Chris Pratt too. And it's just, oh, it's Chris it's Pratt. It's Fuck's yeah. sakes, right? Anyway, this has been your episode of Friday Nightmare. It's January this is, edition. And see, <laughs> this is, uh, and this is what, you know, it all ties into, uh, you know, the end of our Out of the Dark, you know, what what movies should never be considered full feature-length movies. See, this should have been a short podcast, but we dragged it <laughs> out. See what happened, folks? <laughs> Actually, I think our conversation was valuable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're the <laughs> bad duke. We're not the night swim. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought it was funny, though. I was like, I could bring that in. <laughs> and hopefully when we'll be back again, which may be a month from now, because let's be real, people, unless we have more than five fucking movies to talk about, Scott and I probably won't record. So Yeah, we're just, we are just going to kind of, uh, you know, play it by ear with as many, try to watch as many releases as we can. But, like, if the uh, pickings are slim, it might take us a little while, but we'll try to get back as soon as we can. So it will be once to twice a month, depending on what releases are. I think that's what definitely I agree with you. That's the schedule we're going to have to go by. Um, if there's nothing to talk about, then there's nothing to talk about. So like, right. but we will be back again, moving through this 2024 list with all of you. Uh, thank you so much for listening. As always, we are part of the Legion Podcast Network. We are proud members of that. Uh, if you're interested in joining the Legion Patreon, you can get lots of cool stuff. I don't know if we need to continue with what we always do here. <sighs> but Scott's just giving me the look. But should this be a short version of this, or do you want to do the full director's cut? Hell no! What are we <laughs> What are you waiting for? Oh my god, what are we waiting for? Join us. <laughs> Join us today and you can hear more about Night Swim. <laughs> now everybody fucking hates it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and you can hear how I'll be gaslit by Little Bites coming soon this year. Well, we already know, even though she hates it, uh, Night Swim will be in her top ten by the end of the year. Absolutely. Like, Night Night Swim right now, I just feel is such a quality film that, you know, there's no way they could... (laughs) Don't go swimming. (laughs) There's no way they could have possibly avoided this. No way. And and I'm going to cut out that little piece where he just said, Night Swim is uh, really good. I'm going to cut that out and put it in the front of the episode. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, Heather Heather was really... Like, she is being gaslit. Something's going on. I start getting, like, (laughs) notes are like... Are you in a safe space? Are you okay? <laughs> you know, this is a safe space to talk, Heather. We can you talk. Know, when you want to talk about your weird obsession with Blumhouse films, we can do that if we really need to. Um, 
but as always, thanks for listening. We'll see you guys soon. And Scotty, do you have anything to say to the good people? Until next time, kitties. Uh, you know, just if you're going to go swimming <laughs> and there's a spirit in the water, do the smart thing and get the fuck out of the water. And buy and, pool toys if you can afford them. Yes, fucking and don't use fucking quarters. quarters. You're going to ruin the goddamn filter. <laughs> and so until next time, pleasant dreams. See ya.